Hi there everyone and welcome to another tip of the week. Uh, this is Lily Vogelsang, a product manager here at uh, Tumbum Animation and I'd like to go over um, some more stuff to do with Storyboard Pro to give Storyboard artists out there uh, a bit more of a chance to play around with this new version and to play with some of the um, offerings in here. So I'd like to go over this week um, a little bit more about how to work with color and how to save brushes with colors that you want to reuse um, as you're drawing. So um, there's a few changes that have been made here to the way that the um, drawing interface is. I did a tip of the week already about the brushes and how to create your own brushes and the different tool properties that you'll find in the brush tool. So you already know how to create a brush but we didn't really talk yet about how the color works and the color has changed a little bit since the previous version of Storyboard Pro. And so what we decided to do with this version was to really just simplify this interface here and make it a lot simpler um, and faster and easier to use. So you have the ability here to switch between RGB and HSV sliders, but usually I think the um, HSV ones are you know, more sort of easy to, to look at and understand than, than the others. And you can also double click on the current color here to pop open the color wheel which is the same color wheel that we had available before. So if you are happier or more comfortable using the color wheel, you can still use the color wheel, but instead of double clicking down here, you're gonna double click on the current color. So what, how this works, um, and I tend myself just to use the sliders because I find that really fast, but how this works is as you're drawing here, um, if you're drawing on a bitmap layer, as you draw, you're kind of just laying down the pixels with the color. And so you can, at any point in time, save this color if you want to reuse it often. And the way to save your color is just to click on the plus sign down here to add the color as a new swatch. So basically, first, you set the current color here to be the color that you want to save. And then you add this color as a new swatch. So if I want to have a red revision brush, I can add that as a new color swatch. I can always, you know, select a color swatch that's already in there just by clicking on it and I can remove it if I don't like that color swatch. And so for example, I seem to have two blacks here that are like the same so I can get rid of one of them. And um, you also have the ability just to click and drag there to reposition the color swatches so that you can get them kind of in the in the right order that you want them to be. And so you can save color swatches in that way. So it's really simple and easy just click on the plus sign to add a swatch, you can remove a swatch, you can reorder swatches. And then you simply drag on the slider here to change the um, actual color that you're saving or that you're working with for the current color. Now the only other thing to be aware of is that there's a slight difference between how colors behave when you're drawing on a bitmap layer versus a vector layer. And so when you're drawing on a bitmap layer, you do have the ability here to kind of draw with the colors that you're working with here, but you can also hit the D shortcut and color pick off of your drawing, and then what it does is it color picks the resultant pixel. Um, so in other words, if I kind of color pick off of this area where I have these two intersecting colors, you see how there's a fade there? As the pixels fade from one color to another color, I can go in there and I can color pick any one of these pixels in here, and it will color pick that pixel's information, and then I can use this now to draw. And so it allows you to kind of fade from one color to another and get some effects that way. Of course, you can also turn the opacity down a little bit if you want to get more fading in there. So if you turn the opacity down, then you're really, you're really building up on the color, and it makes it a little bit easier then to color pick on the, on the color there. Um, so the difference with a vector layer, so I'm just going to click on my vector layer here, and, and we'll draw similarly. We'll draw over here. Let me just select a you know, something that doesn't really have any texture on it just to make it really easy to understand. So the difference with a vector line is that you only apply one color for the entire length of the line. If you look at the bitmap line here, there's a lot of variation even along the length of the line. You have these semi-transparent pixels down here and so on. When you select like a regular vector tool, you have no transparent pixels at all. When you select a semi-transparent color and you paint with it, it works, but what happens when you try and mix colors, let's say I'll just take like a green color here now and I'll draw with my green color. 
if I use my D shortcut to color pick off the resultant area in here, it color picks the original color instead of the resultant color because the way that the color works is it's just applied to the entire length of the line. It's actually the same thing if you do use one of these texture brushes. So, for example, if I draw here with my purple color, I do look like I have some semi-transparent pixels there. I'll draw with my yellow color on top. Even if I color pick off the area in the middle, it still color picks the original color. And that's just because the way that Vector works is it can only store one color along the length of the line. So knowing this and keeping this in mind, if what you're doing is you're using colors purely for the reason that you're doing revisions, then you can still work with your um, with your vector color and you can do the revisions on a vector layer because you don't really need a variation in color for that. All you need is to be able to say, uh, you know, like move this guy. Here, let's do this with a um, regular brush there. So let's say I want to add a new vector layer that I can use as a revision layer. Then I can just take this one and say, okay, move this guy, you know, further over here. He needs to be over a little bit more. And that's enough for my note to myself of how to how to do that. Some people want to also be able to save the brush properties that you select here with a color. So let's say for example if I know that I like to draw let's just add a new panel here. Let's say if I know that I like to draw my rough drawings um, on a bitmap layer might be on a bitmap layer, might be on a vector layer, but let's say I like to draw my drawings with uh, maybe a little bit of texture. I kind of, I'm, I'm a fan of the marker. I like the marker tool quite a bit. And then if I put marker plus kind of a, a little bit of a blue color like this, maybe even with a little transparency on it, then this gives me a really nice brush that I can build up on and I can use to do my rough drawings. So if I've decided now that I like the brush, if you save a new preset here, all it does is it saves these tool properties on top. So it saves, you know, the size, the flow, the texture, those sorts of things. If I want to also save the color with the brush, then this is what you can use a tool preset for. And so what the tool preset is, is there's a toolbar in here. If you go to Windows, Toolbars, Tool Presets, this is the toolbar I'm looking at here. And all you have to do here now is first you get your settings working the way you want them to work and then you can click on the add preset button and now you can choose what kind of properties you want to save in your preset so I can choose to save the color with it or not if you uncheck it it doesn't save the color you can choose to have it create a layer you know when you're making that so I could have it create a layer called rough if I want to you can choose to have the draw behind option saved or not this is new because it used to always save the draw behind option and you can choose to save auto flatten or not. So I'm going to choose not to save the layer, the draw behind, or the auto flatten because I find it a little bit confusing sometimes when it changes properties while I'm working. But I do want to save the color. And so in this case, I can save this as my new rough, give it a name. You can choose one of the um, one of the icons that we have in here, or you can load in your own custom icon there. And you also now have the ability to assign a shortcut. So if I want to, I can create a shortcut for my rough brush. And then you can assign this shortcut in your preferences. And so now I can just click OK. So now I see that I have a new brush here in my toolbar called Better Rough. This is the one I just saved. So now if I need to um, get to these brushes quickly, I could just, for example, change to a different brush. And then I can come back to my Better Rough brush and I can continue to draw and I have all the properties that I need and that I saved from that um, layer. Just be aware that if you do add a vector layer and you start to draw on the vector layer that there are certain properties that are different because the properties that you can save on a bitmap layer are different than the ones that you can save on a vector layer. So um, when you're creating your brush preset or your tool preset, think about you know which layer you're going to be drawing on whether it's bitmap or vector and create your tool properties that way first so that you always have the correct tool properties in your tool presets.